Are you tired of avoiding bright lights, avoiding pictures, side angles, because you're embarrassed about the craters or scars in your cheeks? Please listen to this talk. Acne scars are not permanent. You can improve them by 60 to 80% with the right approach. The key to improving acne scars is to break scar tissue, rebuild collagen, and resurface the top of your skin. So I'm Dr. Morgana Colombo, board certified dermatologist, founder of Vida Derma, and I am here to help you understand how science can help you improve your acne scars in a very noticeable, significant manner. I see patients almost every day complaining about acne scars and a lot of them feel discouraged. They feel like they've tried everything and nothing works. They're stuck with the scars. And uh, I'm here to tell you, you are not stuck with the scars. There are science-based treatments that you can do to significantly improve your scars. So today I'm going to break down the science of treatments that can be used to improve acne scars. We're going to talk about resurfacing lasers such as CO2, erbium. We're going to talk about subcision, punch excisions, microcoring, RF microneedling, biostimulators such as Radiesse and Sculptra. So listen to this talk if you want to learn how to improve your scars. Acne scarring doesn't happen from the acne itself. It is a result of inflammation leading to destruction of internal collagen, collagen beneath the surface. As the skin heals, three things happen. You have fibrotic feathering of the skin, where fibrous bands form inside your skin and pull down the surface. Number two, you have collagen loss. And with the collagen loss, there is volume loss and uh, indentations are seen on the skin. And then number three, there are su surface irregularities that result as a consequence of the inflammation. Um, so you see uneven texture where light gets reflected weirdly from your skin. So if you want to improve your acne scars, you want to act on those three factors. So you want to break down those fibrotic bands that form inside the skin. You want to promote collagen internally to create better volume and, and fill in the skin. And then three, you want to resurface the top of the skin to make the skin less uneven on top. So in order to improve acne scars, you have to treat the skin from inside and from the outside to sort of like level out the surface. When it comes to acne scars, the main types that we typically see are your rolling scars, your ice pick scars, and your box car scars. The ice pick scars are the most difficult ones to treat. They are very deep V-shaped indentations on the skin. Um, the box scar scars, they're quite common. They're more broad based, um, oval or round depressions on the skin. And uh, the last ones, your rolling scars, which are quite com common, they're basically undulating depressions on the skin, wavy-like depressions on the skin. Um, it's important to know which scar type we're dealing with because we approach them slightly differently. So we've discussed the three ways where we address scars, and we also discuss the types of acne scars that we have. Now, let's talk about what actual treatments you can do to address the three different ways to improve scars. So we're gonna start with uh, improving 
the fibrotic bands or the fibrotic feathering that happens as a consequence of acne scarring. So we want to release those bands from the inside and uh, as a result of that, lift the skin. So there are a few things you can do to achieve that. The most effective way to release those bands is through subcision. So with subcision, we insert small needles inside the skin, sort of move the needle back and forth and uh, break down the scar bands and release them. Um, it's, it can create some bruising, some discomfort for maybe like a few days, but in general, pretty well tolerated treatment alone is not going to give you a huge improvement. But again, nothing alone is going to give you a huge improvement. The key to improving acne scars is multi-modality treatment, combining different things and addressing the three factors that I talked about. Um, so continuing with trying to get rid of those fibrotic bands or tethering of the skin. Um, so we talked about subcision. Um, another thing that can be done for that is punch excisions, where we take literally cut out little pieces of scar. And with that, you release the bands and you also just remove some of like those little scars. Punch excisions are really great for specifically ice pick and box scar scars. Um, subcision is really good for all of them, but really, really beneficial for rolling scars. So just if you want to break down the bands, improve the fibrotic tethering that happens, subcision, punch excisions are options. Most recently, we've had a new modality of treatment called microcoring, where we punch out little cores of skin with devices. Um, there's the Elacor that does non-heat microcoring, and there's a laser, the Ultra Clear, that does laser-based coring, which has a little heat involved. So with those devices, you can sort of um, do a bunch of like little punches all at once and get some improvement in specifically the ice pick and box scar scars. The next thing to do to improve your acne scars is to stimulate collagen inside the skin. How do you do that? So one of the approaches can be through injection of biostimulators such as hyperdilute radius or Sculptra. Sculptra is polylactic acid that we mix in water and we inject this mixture into the skin, it creates inflammation and promotes collagen. Hyperdilute radius is calcium hydroxyapatite that we mix in saline, again, injecting the skin, and that mixture promotes collagen, which can be beneficial in acne scars. So those are you know, two ways to promote collagen. Um, your lasers and microneedling RF devices can also promote collagen inside the skin by heating up the skin and inducing a collagen response. The third thing to do to improve your acne scars is to resurface your skin, is to level the top so the skin looks smoother. So we achieve resurfacing typically with lasers, um, and specifically ablative fractional lasers such as CO2 and erbium. I have a core CO2 and an ultra clear erbium laser and they're really effective. Um, they basically burn skin on the top and deep. Um, you control how deep you go. Um, or how superficial you go. And those lasers are really, really effective. When you do the deep heating of the skin with the lasers, you get the side effect of collagen stimulation, which is one of the factors that I mentioned addressing when it comes to improving acne scars. 
The other devices that give you some resurfacing are the RF microneedling devices. You have two different kinds of devices. You have some where only the bottom of the needle is heated. Those are more um, appropriate for promoting collagen. They don't really give you a whole lot of resurfacing. Um, but you also have uh, some devices where the needle is heated top to bottom. In those devices, you actually heat some of like the epidermal layers of the skin. So you do get some resurfacing with that. I have both devices for acne scars. I tend to favor the ones where the needle is heated the whole way through. I feel like I get better results for acne scars when it comes to those. So I mentioned resurfacing lasers. A lot of people are terrified of doing CO2 or erbium. They're scared of the downtime. And I get it, you know, they're not easy. Um, there's definitely downtime involved in those treatments, but they give you really great results when it comes to improving your acne scars. So both the CO2 and the erbium are gonna leave you red, puffy, for maybe five to seven days. Um, from the beginning, you already get some improvement in the texture, but the full results you see really in three or four months when you not only have the resurfacing effects, but also the collagen promotion secondary to those devices. I tend to favor fractional CO2 for people that have lighter skin types and uh, the new laser ultra clear um, for people that have uh, more pigmented skin. The difference is the CO2 is an all or nothing when it comes to heat, so I can't really control the heat as much. With the Ultra Clear, we um, have a little bit of like ability to customize the heat settings and maybe drop it lower for people that have darker skin tones, still go high on people that are you know, lighter skinned. Um, another advantage I'll say of the Ultra Clear, as I mentioned before, it does this micro coring thing, which can be really beneficial for treating acne scars, especially in people that have ice picks or the box scar type of scars. We talked about all sorts of treatments here that you can do to improve your scars by targeting the three things that we're trying to address here. Um, but how do you decide what treatment is be best for the kind of scar that you have? Um, so my recommendation is if you are mostly seeing rolling scars, the wavy undulations, um, a good combination would invo involve subcision and uh, RF microneedling. Um, we usually have to do RF microneedling maybe three or four times with the subcision. Um, you can combine that with one or two rounds of hyperdilute radius or sculpture. And if you want your skin to look really good, you can do sort of like a lighter version of the resurfacing lasers that I mentioned, CO2 or Ultra Pulse or Ultra Clear. Um, if you have more of the ice pick or the box scar scars, um, those are definitely much more challenging to treat. Um, one approach would be to punch out individual, more noticeable, larger scars. And then after that, potentially do some subcision, um, sculpture, hyperdilute radius, so one or two rounds again. And then the key for those scars is really more aggressive resurfacing, superficial and deep or just deep in darker skins with your CO2 or ultra clear laser. You can also do some uh, microcoring for those scars. That's another beneficial treatment with Alacor or ultra clear. How many treatments do you have to do for those people? I would say maybe the injectables a couple times, laser two or three times. And um, over time, you sort of have to repeat occasionally because as you age, you lose volume and that there could be a little bit of like reforming of some of those scars. So guys, in conclusion here, 
Um, and I wanted to say that you're not stuck with your scars. If you're willing to do the proper treatments, you can significantly improve your scars. People often ask me what percent of improvement. I think you can get a good 60 to 80% improvement. It's never going to be perfect, but 60 to 80% improvement is significant. You're going to feel so much more confident and better about your skin. Just remember the approach. You want to break down scar tissue, promote collagen inside and resurface. That's the key to improving acne scar and combine different technologies to achieve that. So it's a multi-modality treatment. Um, but if you're willing to do that, you will definitely see results. Keep in mind that, that some of those treatments require you know, proper training and good technique so you don't end up with side effects and even worse scars. So make sure you go to a board certified dermatologist to get those treatments done. We are the specialty that really knows how to address acne scars. If you like this video, please follow me on my channel.